everybody. I'm Amelia. I do research and development on a small team at GitHub called GitHub Next. Uh, we build prototypes to explore the future of developer experience, which means iterating really quickly. So I thought it'd be fun to talk about some of the experiments that we've done within VS Code uh, and also talk about things we've learned along the way. All right, so I'm going to talk about what's new with GitHub Next, uh, but first I want to talk about what's previous with GitHub Next. Um, so if we look back into the past, the way past, <laughs> uh, when I was interviewing for this job, I had one take home assignment, which was make a VS Code extension. And I had a few hours to learn how VS Code extensions work. I wasn't really familiar with TypeScript. Uh, I had to come up with an idea. Um, and this sounds overwhelming, but this was actually one of my favorite interview exercises. So what, did I, what I ended up doing was building an extension called Footsteps. Um, one of my biggest frustrations within uh, when writing code is I'm usually working across like 20 different tabs. I'm usually working within a long file uh, and finding my way back to places I just edited uh, is a pretty big frustration of mine. So thinking about that, I was also thinking about um, like when you walk on a beach and the footsteps kind of fade out behind you, uh, what if we could do that in our editors? So, um, what I ended up implementing over here is you can see the purple line decorations. Uh, as you edit, it highlights the chunks of code that you just edited. But then as you continue to edit, it, it fades out uh, the ones that you edited previously. Um, so this is helpful for scrolling around within a specific file. And I also added these key bindings so that if you switch to another file, you can find your way back really quickly with just one keystroke. Um, so my biggest takeaways from working on this is you can build something useful in just a few hours. Um, so that was brainstorming an idea, starting a new extension, building the extension and publishing on the marketplace. Uh, it was really, really quick. Uh, one of the biggest, uh, learnings for me was when building extensions, check out other examples. So the VS Code team has published a ton of really great example extensions, uh, but also if you look on the marketplace, your favorite extensions oftentimes are open source, so you can check out their code on GitHub. Um, and I really just wanna highlight, be the change you wanna see in the world. Uh, it seems really daunting to edit the place where you're writing uh, code, but uh, it really wasn't, so hard. Uh, and uh, if you write something that saves you, say, 10 minutes every single day, and it takes you a few hours, uh, that's pretty easy math. It'll save you time in the long run. And also, if you have a problem, I guarantee there are other people with that same problem. Um, so publish it on the marketplace as well. All right. So what is currently going on with GitHub Next? And what, can, what have we built that you can use? Um, so about a year and a half ago, we launched Copilot. Uh, if you haven't used it, it's an AI pair programmer. Basically, if you pause while writing code, uh, it'll finish your line for you, it'll, or it'll suggest a chunk of code that comes after uh, wherever your cursor is. And I don't want to talk about Copilot today. Um, you probably already have opinions about it. <laughs> uh, what I want to talk about is basically where Copilot started. So um, we're a prototyping team. We build prototypes, not products, and we need to keep things really scrappy so we can move quickly and, and uh, get feedback about our ideas. So uh, about a year ago, we released Copilot Labs, which is our, it's an extension within VS Code. You can have access if you have access to Copilot. Um, and it's just our vehicle for prototyping things within VS Code. And when we launched it, we launched with two panels. We had actually a lot of ideas kicking around uh, within GitHub Next. There were things like uh, a node package explorer. There was a really interesting test-driven development uh, panel where you say the inputs and outputs to a function and it generates a function for you. Um, there was a really interesting like repeat after me. So you'd uh, perform some changes and then you would tell uh, AI to keep going and uh, kind of like mimic that pattern. 
we ended up not launching with any of those because they were a little bit too fuzzy. Uh, so one of the ones we launched with was called Explain, where if you highlight some code, uh, you can see the highlighted code up on the top, and you say, Copilot, explain this code to me. It would come back with uh, a, a, a mostly really helpful uh, result. And back then, we were still kind of wrapping our heads around what are the best UI patterns to use with these large language mo models? And uh, how can they help people? When are they more of a detriment than a help? Um, so one of the things that we baked into this experience is this advanced setting panel where uh, anyone can go in and change what the prompt is and change uh, what characters the model stops at. And this is, this is just a signal to say, you know, we're prototyping here, you mess around, maybe you have something really specific or a specific way you want your code explained to you. Um, so especially when we're kind of wrapping our, our heads around a, a specific idea or a field, uh, having these kinds of uh, advanced panels is really, really helpful. And the other panel we launched with is called Translate. It's pretty similar. You can see the highlighted text up here. Uh, and then the user just asks Copilot to translate that code into any other language. So here, this is JavaScript getting translated into Python. Um, this is this is pretty useful when you're learning a new language. So uh, say I'm really comfortable in JavaScript and I have to write a, a function in Python. I can write it in JavaScript and then port it over, or I can, uh, if I have a question, you know, how do you implement a for loop? I can just write that really quickly in JavaScript and uh, have it show me that same code in Python. Um, and the the one learning from here that was actually in both the explain and translate panel was getting user feedback is so helpful. Um, as we're experimenting, uh, we don't know all of the use cases that people are, are going to use our our prototypes or end result products in. So uh, having users able to send signal, like this is incorrect or this is not helpful or uh, even when things are good, right? Uh, that's been really, really helpful for us. So since we launched Copilot Labs, we've added two additional panels. Uh, this one called test generation, it, it's one that I really like. <laughs> I don't know about you, but writing tests is um, not my favorite part of my job. So here you can highlight some code, you can ask it to suggest a test. And the clever thing is once it generates some a test, it'll actually execute that in the background. And if that test ends up failing, uh, like this one does right here, you can say, uh, hey, Copilot, here's the test, here's how it failed. Uh, can you go ahead and fix that for me? And you can see uh, it goes ahead and fixes that text test, and then it passes. One of our learnings from this is uh, the VS Code team has a really awesome package called WebView UI Toolkit. Um, not everyone on our team is really comfortable with web development, and these panels are basically iframed websites within your editor. And there's also really tricky things with theming. So if a user has a dark theme, you don't want a bright white panel right next to their code. So um, this toolkit makes it really easy to have um, website elements like buttons and labels and checkboxes and tables and tabs. And you get to kind of throw them in there and they're already styled like VS Code and they're gonna match the user's theme. So having this for, especially for people who aren't really familiar with web development has been really helpful for keeping our uh, velocity high. And the last panel we added to Copilot Labs, um, I think we added this uh, at GitHub Universe last uh, winter, fall. Uh, and this was an idea I'd been wanting to play around with for a while, but just wasn't getting the time. So one night I just spent a few hours adding it uh, to our Copilot Labs extension. And the spirit of it is, what would happen if we could paint our code the way we uh, paint something in Photoshop? And this is important because you know we're not always writing code. In fact, most of the time I'm editing existing code. Um, so 
I, I was trying to figure out what are the most common refactor in these cases and then just throw them in a button. Um, so uh, you can see up here, if you highlight a function, uh, you can hit a button. So uh, um, say you want it to be more readable. Uh, that's something that happens at the start of this video. So it'll loop around. So um, maybe this function is a little bit hard to read, add some types, make it a little bit more readable. Um, there's also easy buttons for, I'm debugging this, can you add some console log statements? Or I'm done debugging this, let's clean it up. And the one that actually people end up using the most often, which I'm still surprised about, is this fix bug button, um, which when it works, it's great. It doesn't always work, but uh, it's nice to have like a Hail Mary button where you're like, I don't know what's going on, can you just fix that typo somewhere for me? Um, we actually launched this with a, a more hidden uh, UI element. Uh, so we have that panel additionally in code lenses. So you can see the cursor is focused on line 17. Um, but above this function, you have this toolbox of all of the different brushes. And I thought this was going to be the, the only UI element for brushes. Um, because it's kind of where you are. You don't have to have a separate panel open, but it, it ended up being uh, frustrating enough that I have it hidden behind a settings flag because it, it takes up vertical space. So as the user is moving their cursor around, uh, their code is shifting a little bit. Um, so the biggest learning for us here was uh, just become familiar with the VS Code primitives. There's so much you can do in the editor that it can be hard to keep track. <laughs> Um, so even in this screenshot, there's the code lens at the top, there's line decorations, which is the purple background or the uh, like yellow bar to the left of line nine. There's diagnostics, which show up in the problems panel. Um, there's web view panels you can show on the side and there's many, many more things you can do with a, an extension than this. So um, spending some time getting familiar with those primitives is, really helpful for moving quickly in the future. All right, so all of those are available today to anybody who downloads the extension. Um, I thought it'd be fun to talk about some things that were kind of kicking around within uh, Copilot Next but aren't available yet. Um, so the first one is called Copilot Radar. Uh, so the text editing, editing interface is over to the left and as the cursor changes focus, uh, we have this panel off to the right that tries to surface to the developer any other pieces of code that they might find useful. Um, so whether that's references to a variable or the definition of the variable or the type definition, um, it tries to reference those with these different colors uh, depending on why we think it would be interesting. And then the really fun part is this blue Copilot logo, which um, is basically the large language model telling us what the user might find interesting. And this comes up with really uh, uh, surprising use cases like the opposite side of a bracket or uh, another variable that's named the same thing or um, a comment that is related or a similar error like this one. Um, so this is a fun experiment we, we have kicking around. Uh, Another one is called Copilot Voice. I really like this uh, exploration we're doing. Uh, it's focused on making programming more accessible. Um, so there's a lot of developers who have a harder time uh, coding from a keyboard. And uh, uh, the current day solutions are good, but they could, they could be improved. You'll often end up doing things like, like spelling out variable names or spelling out uh, like function. Um, and so we're trying to figure out how can we lean into these new large language models to make uh, programming more accessible by voice. Um, so you can see in this demo video, uh, I'm doing things like asking what the function does, or can you add a new function, or can you highlight these lines? Um, there's some really exciting explorations coming out. This is really just the tip of the iceberg for that. And then the last exploration that I thought would be fun to share, this is something I threw together the other day. Um, in addition to uh, 
thinking about how can we not just generate code, I'm really interested in how can we, instead of automating our jobs as developers, uh, empower ourselves and make us better developers. So uh, this is kind of like uh, an ambient way to learn new concepts. So basically in the background, it looks at the file you're editing and suggests improvements. Like you don't need to define this uh, temporary variable or anything that you might never come across on your own, but uh, is kind of a nice way to improve over time as opposed to studying or taking a course or anything like that. Um, so that's my talk. Uh, hopefully you found those demos interesting. If you're interested in keeping track of what we're doing, uh, our website is githubnext.com. And I would love to see more people uh, prototyping extensions in VS Code. It's really not as scary as it possibly seems at first. Amazing. Thank you so much, Amelia. This is so fun to see all the innovative work that your team is doing. I ju it just like gets us so excited, right? Everyone loves being in tech um, and to see exactly what everyone's working on and what's next is always just so fun for all of our viewers. Um, we do have a few questions in the chat. Um, so first up, we have how does the GitHub Next team decide on what projects to work on? Yeah, this is a great question. We're still kind of solidifying our process. Um, there's a few metrics that we focus on, like, uh, does this help enough people? Is this different enough from the tools that we have today? Um, and we're always trying to tie ourselves back to what can help GitHub developers, what can help the most developers. Um, I'm sure there's a great answer to this question. <laughs> I just don't have it right now. <laughs> I think that's a great answer. I know. And you've made all of the your, your presentation <laughs> and your answer have made um, all of the things coming up more approachable mm -hmm. and development in general just more approachable and fun and exciting. Mm -hmm. So I really love yeah. that we're, we're talking right. about the bleeding and, edge. And it's like we're all on the journey together, right? I love yeah. getting that insight into it. Yeah. Uh, we have another question. Um, so what has been the trickiest problems to solve when making uh, these VS Code extensions? Yeah, that's a great question as well. Um, I'd say one of the biggest things is like believing, like knowing the right fidelity to bring a prototype to, right? Uh, you don't want to spend too much time putting together something that isn't promising, but you want to give each idea enough time so that when you do get feedback or test it, uh, you have a pretty good idea of how it is as an idea instead of your implementation. Um, so that's a big one. Uh, the other biggest one that comes to mind is really just knowing the affordances, like uh, knowing the materials you're working with uh, can take a little bit of time, mm -hmm. uh, which is nice because we can build that up over time because we keep making VS Code extensions. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I think those are the two biggest ones for me. Absolutely. Thanks for answering that. Um, and then another question we had, um, where can people follow along with new GitHub Next projects to see what your team is working on? Yeah, so we have our website, githubnext.com. Uh, we also post pretty regularly on Twitter. Um, and then I think the best channel is we have a Discord um, where the team is in there. We're talking to people. We're getting feedback on prototypes. Um, so if you want high touch, uh, uh, feedback or you want to talk to us, we are in the Discord and we want to talk to you. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here with us today and telling us all about the great things that GitHub Next is working on. Thanks so much.